Afloat with Henry Morgan. Henry Morgan has learned that Panama City is bursting with wealth, which is awaiting the arrival of a Spanish fleet to take it all to Spain. The fleet is assembling in Havana in Cuba. Planning to sack and loot Panama City, Morgan sends Jeffrey Hunter to Havana to pose as a Dutch merchant and to find out movements of the fleet. Meanwhile, in Havana, Diaz has grown tired of Kitty and threatens to sell her in the slave market. Upon his arrival in Havana with Hero, Jeffrey goes to the governor of Cuba, Don Pietro Pizarro. But Dolores sees him and unmasks him as Morgan's spy. Jeffrey refuses to tell why he's in Cuba. So Diaz is given the task of getting this information from him in the torture dungeons. You will regret, Hunter, that you didn't tell me the reason for your being here in Havana. You will never drag from me that information. <laughs> the ropes are slack. Just one twist and they'll tighten. You'll begin to feel your limbs being torn from your body. Always a coward, aren't you, dear? You think to mock me? All right. A vicious twist and limbs stretch. Again, the ratchets click. Sweat breaks out and his forehead and teeth bite through clenched lips. Fools! Yes, watch it, Jackie. Give the wheel to me. A savage sound of many clicks and muscles tear from limbs. Pain from the pit of the stomach sends out a muffled cry which forces open the clenched lips and hangs echoed in the dungeon. And though held taut, the figure seems to say. Water again brings back to the mind the pain of a wrecked body. It happens all again. But not a word comes from the victim's lips. Coals from the brazier standing near his head stir with the rustle, but his mind is too far away in a world of pain to note the significance of the sound. Until the pincers send screaming pain racing through his body as they burn and tear flesh from his bones. And the blackness of the mind covers the pain of the body. Deep, deep is the blackness which water cannot revive. Yeah, that is no good. We'll have to wait and then think up. Diaz's lips are thin. His eyes glow with an almost insane luster as he looks upon his fellow creature. So helpless, so broken, and at the moment so far away from pain. Diaz's anger surges like a red turbulent tide within. The desire to mutilate, destroy the man he hates, takes all sense from his mind. Like an animal, he snatches from the wall a barbed whip and swings it high above his head. Stop it, Diaz. That will do no good. Man is unconscious. Uh, Don Pietro, I did not hear you enter. I came to see what progress you had made. Put down that whip. It will serve no purpose at the moment. Now, he has defeated us. He has told us nothing. And you have not treated him gently. We have tried to revive him, but failed. We can be patient. He will return to a world of pain. And we must think of other means to make him open his mouth. If torture does not, there must be some other way that we can persuade him. Don Pietro, I think I know the way. I am listening. And as Diaz talks, a slow smile spreads over Don Pietro's face, a smile of triumph. Orders are given to the two black attendants to take the unconscious Jeffrey down from the rack and put about him heavy fetters and tossed him into a dark, dark, dark infested cell. Gradually, the black curtain of his mind, they sleep through the messengers of pain who lift the blanket of blessed unconsciousness. Wearily, he turns his head and tries to moisten the dryness of his lips. When he attempts to move his like driving knives through his muscles, all motive power has gone from him. The past is all in swearing mist. No single thought can come from his aching mind, but it's just pain. 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 But the same flag floor is cold and brings some relief. Time doesn't exist, there is only pain. And then the iron doors clang open and two men come in. And because his legs will not obey the orders that come from his mind, they each seize an arm. Agony runs through him again. They drag him out once more into the torch-lit dungeon. The yellow light blinds him for a moment. 
And they paused. I let him take a look around. Slowly in a hard light, things take their shape. Instruments of torture being back. He dully sees Dietz and Don Pietro standing by the wreck. Stupidly, he looks at them. And slowly, he realizes that the wreck is not empty. And it's though his mind is away from it all, as though he were looking down at himself, that he seems like a disinterested spectator having no relation to anything about it. Dragged over to the wreck, he looks down at the figure stretched there. And into a pair of eyes, eyes which seem to grow large and are full of terror. As he looks, the pain in his head eases to let through his mind so slowly the thin threads of recognition. Once the flow begins, it rushes like a torrent. His scream echoes around the walls. I'm frightened. And now, perhaps, Hunter, you will tell us why Captain Morgan sent you to Havana. I... I... <laughs> you know, Kitty will not bear it in silence. You swine. I'll kill you for this. Turn the wheel. No, please, no. Only you, Hunter, can stop that wheel from being turned. Now, come on, Hunter. Tell us. You turn that. I'll break every bone in your body. And uh, this is your last chance. Speak up, else I'll turn the wheel myself. You remember that I am not gentle. Don't let them do it to me, Jeffrey. Don't let them do it. I'll tell you. I think that you are being indeed very wise, Hunter. Now, why did Captain Henry Morgan send you here to Havana? What is the reason? I came of my own accord. No one sent me I came here to rescue Kitty. Do not lie to us, Hunter. If you lie once, Kitty will suffer. You didn't know that Kitty had come to Cuba. I am a very, very impatient man, Hunter, and I have no mercy. I want this information from you, and I am going to get it. If I do not get the information, this girl will die. Now, what is it to be? This is your last opportunity. Why did you come to Havana? Jeffrey, don't let them hurt me. Please don't let them hurt me anymore. I, I came to Havana because I, I want to know about the fleet of Central the Harbor. So, what did you want to know when it was sailing for Panama City? Ah, uh -huh. Captain Morgan knew about that, eh? He knows about the wealth in Panama City. Tell me, Hunter, what else does she know about? Isn't that all he needs to know? Oh, Captain Morgan wants to know when the fleet leaves Havana. He thinks, no doubt, to sail ahead of it around Cape Horn and wait for it there until it leaves. The wealth of Panama City. Yes. Yes, that's his plan. I see. Very well, then. This time, Mr. Hunter, we will not be making any mistakes. For this time, Captain Morgan will not be successful. He will fail in his mission. And then I shall have the pleasure of having him here before me, alive, in this very dungeon. What will happen when you do not return? Captain Morgan will go straight ahead of his plans. And there's nothing whatever to tell him. You should know that by now. He will say all that learning information I, I would have brought back to him. Good. That is very good. It is a surprise that Captain Morgan will receive when he sails to attack the treasure fleet. You should have told us all this information before, Hunter. It would have saved you a lot of pain. Thank you, Diaz, for your cooperation. Good day. Just a moment, Don Pietro. What are we to do with this person now? I do not really care, Diaz. He is of little use to us now. In his present condition, he is useless to anybody. Uh, there is to be a sale tomorrow in the market. Put him up for sale. Well, that is all, dear. I will go now and leave you to finish off the business. I must go and act upon the information that I have just received. Well, dear, fate has thrown me in your path once again. Must be for some purpose. Fate will repeat itself and I'll be waiting for the next meeting, dear. I shall be remembering a lot. When it happens again, Hunter, it will be you who will once again have regrets. 
The sale in the markets tomorrow should be a very interesting one. I must attend to it. There will be you and Kitty. You're doing that to Kitty. Why? Because it did me to do so. But there's another one who's being sold as well as you and Kitty. A certain Antoinette de Lazy. But this one, she is the real Antoinette de Lazy. <laughs> All right, you men. Take that woman off the rack and bring the two of them with you. We'll take them to the auctioneer in the markets. the cell that the auctioneer said to put them in. Hmm. It isn't very large. Now hold the lantern up so that I can see. It will not be your home for very long, you know. Just until after the sales tomorrow. Oh? So, you are not to be alone. You have a companion here. Here's this. Go away. Please, go away. <laughs> very beautiful, too. And you speak in English. There's only one person whom you could be. You must be Antoinette de Lacy, eh? What want you with me? Nothing at the moment. But you make me regret that I'm sailing away on a ship so very soon. The fates, Hunter, are playing one big joke, eh? The fates, they put you and Kitty and Antoinette de Lacy in the one cell all together. And tomorrow, you lose sight of each other for good. <laughs> it's a good joke, a rich joke. <laughs> all right, log them in. What is happening? I do not understand it all. I'm so very frightened. Never mind about yourself. Help me with this man, Jeffrey Hunter. Let's try and make him comfortable. He's been tortured. They are cruel and inhuman. Just people. They're going to sell us as slaves. Yes, it... It looks like the end of everything now. It might not be. Why? There's just one chance. One faint glimmer of hope. I have a friend... A Negro called Hero. While he is still free, all is not lost. What a slender hope this is. What could Hero do to aid these three unfortunate people? Listen to the next exciting episode of Afloat with Henry Morgan. Henry Morgan.